Herzlich willkommen, meine Damen und Herren. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber um die Qualität zu erhöhen, werde ich es auf Englisch machen. Aber das gute News ist einfach, dass mein Buch jetzt auf Deutsch bekommen ist. Letzte Woche, so da bin ich sehr froh mit. And that's about the maximum of my German that you will be able to get. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, dann, dann versuche ich später noch einen Witz zu machen und dann ist das Rudi Carell-Effekt da, ja? Yeah? All right, um, cross-industry innovation, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm really happy uh, to be allowed to travel all over the world and uh, to, uh, let's say, talk about ideas from other areas, from other sectors. Two weeks ago, I was at NASA in Houston. I think I'm an engineer by, by background, so this is about the top of my career. This is also the first time that my father took me seriously, because <laughs> NASA had invited me. And what happened there in, uh, in Houston? We have uh, Omar Hatamle, who is the chief innovation officer of NASA. He said, we are past moon shots. We are now into Mars shots. So in the near future, we'll be sending people to Mars. And this is a clear cross-industry innovation challenge. And there, uh, with about uh, 20 people from NASA and 50 other companies, we discussed cross-industry innovation. Really super interesting. And the best part for me was to be able to take a beautiful present for my son, <laughs> a real spacesuit with helmet. So I'm, I'm totally happy now. Um, I'm Dutch. My name is Ramon Vullings. Uh, Dutch, uh, living in Belgium. And I help companies to look outside their sector. And that's what we'll be discussing today. I'm actually here to teach you three things. First one, disruption often comes from outside of your sector. Second item, ideas are discoveries. And third, organizations, and you all need a remix strategy. Now, I'm a Dutch guy living in Antwerp, Belgium. Believe me, I've lived in Munich. The, the Swegen verstehe ich ein bisschen Deutsch und spreche ein bisschen. Uh, I've lived in Paris, I've lived in Hong Kong, but coming to Belgium is the biggest border crossing cultural clash you can have, <laughs> even compared to Hong Kong. Uh, I'm part of a beautiful network, half Flemish, half Dutch, and we travel all over the world to uh, help companies innovate. Uh, these are uh, my seven uh, beautiful colleagues. Now, I love to travel. In 2008, my wife and I, before we, uh, we got our, uh, our son, uh, we decided to travel the old Silk Road. And the sport was to travel the old Silk Road over land, not using airplanes. This took us one and a half year to finish this whole travel around. We took boats. So we had to fly, I believe, two times. But for the rest, all over land. Why did we do this? This was to learn from how, especially in the East, People tackle similar challenges, but figure out totally different solutions. So I made a lot of pictures there, and uh, you'll be seeing a few of them as we go through my, uh, my presentation. This was in Nepal. There's a village called Opportunity Village. <laughs> beautiful. So you, all kinds of beautiful things. Now, my life's quest is to figure out elegant solutions. You are in a certain business. Uh, part of you is here with, uh, with the lotteries, with, with the casinos. A part of you is here from totally different sectors. And my quest is to look for elegant solutions because someone else probably has figured out a more elegant way to solve what you are trying to solve. Now, let me uh, give you a few uh, examples. So on a meta level, operating on a human body or operating on a car has something similar. There's a beautiful joke of the surgeon saying to the car mechanic, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's true that we do the same thing, but only if you can fix the car while driving, I will take you seriously. <laughs> Now, some of you may, ha may recognize this kind of machine. What is this? Yeah, that's a big problem, huh? Intelligent audience, huh? Yeah, higher educated. You think this is a parking meter. It is not. This is designed by the devil himself <laughs> to frustrate intelligent people like you. Because you put your credit card where the stupid ticket goes, you, you try to get uh, the quittung from wherever. It's absolutely devilish design. Now, if you take the IKEA approach to this, you get something like this. German design, by the way. 
This is elegant design. The right thing, I would say, a parking thing. The left thing, bad. <laughs> now, more creative uh, ideas. If you ever go to London, try to figure out the blue taxi, the blue cab, because the blue cab will take you for free within the city center from point A to point B. Why do they bring you for free? Because they've merged two fantastic IDs. A taxi driver always wants to talk with you, and you need to go somewhere. And if you're on the street and someone with a, um, what is that in, uh, in English or in German? Klemmboard, uh, the, the, little, the, the little plates with paper on it that you try to interview people. Normally what happens on the street, if you see someone like that, you deviate around. You try not to be interviewed. In this case, they've merged the two because the person driving the taxi is not a real taxi driver. It's an official market researcher. And he will interview you while driving, taking out the stress of your normal argument, I need to go somewhere, and then uh, asking you what kind of deodorant you use, uh, what your average house income is, if you have 1.3 children, on whatever they ask. So that's a beautiful combination. Now, these are the kind of things I play with. The model behind my thinking is concept, combine, create. First, we conceptualize innovation questions, then we look for smart combinations, and finally, we make it fit. Now, I get to run around a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, cool companies. I love the, with the police, we were with a task force house, and this is with a big energy company. And they had a challenge on to get more effect with reduced workforce. So these days, you operate power plants. In the old days, you would do that with 35 people. Now you only do it with three that requires a totally different skill set for these people. So we went out to look where can we learn how other areas actually have a very small crew manning a very complex operation. Now, then we went out, I wish we actually went out to the International Space Station, but we just did desk research on them. We did some desk research on polar and Arctic expeditions, because in all cases you have a small crew managing a very complex environment. And we did get to visit this thing. A submarine. That was really cool, and you can learn a lot about submarines, how they're organized, and the most important thing we've learned there is how they do knowledge transfer, how they do work planning in transferring their knowledge to the next team coming in. Apparently they use some kind of spreadsheet. And finally, the energy company was allowed to get the original spreadsheet without the data, but the way it was organized in terms of knowledge transfer. These are the kind of programs uh, we run, so they look a little bit like this. This is an artistic impression like our visual harvester there on, in the corner, beautiful thing. In more, let's say, a business PowerPoint speak, it looks like this. Stage gate process, module one, six months cross industry program. So this is the kind of stuff we do with a lot of companies to figure out ideas from outside, being open to integrate them. Now, um, as we're also talking about digitalization, let me grab one of the uh, items the creation of a new digital channel for a large, uh, I won't say the name, but for a large company, they wanted to create a new digital channel. So we went out to research how other sectors and industries did something similar. And we asked all kinds of experts, experts from other fields. We got someone in from Vodafone, we got someone in from Nike, from Van Gils, and from Max. And it was really great to learn from these other kinds of digital channels on how they manage their processes. And what in this case we learned from fashion, and that came from the, the person running the Max uh, web shop, because they were, in this case, it was an electrical appliance manufacturer that wanted to go more digital, and they wanted to learn, in this case, from fashion. So what we learned from the person from Max is that they actually used their website because they were uh, really afraid, our, our client was afraid of all the returns. Uh, supposing they would be selling phones, you send out phones and finally you get a lot of returns. Returns means a lot of costs and everything, and if people then order 20 phones, send 20 or 19 back, keep one, they were afraid of that process. And this guy from Max says, oh, that's easy. We use data mining to figure out who the people are that normally order 20 dresses and send them all back. Okay, yeah, you can determine that, okay. And then? You cannot say, you know, no, you cannot buy in our web shop or anything. No, 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 he said, it's really easy. Because then we change the time for delivery. Normally, it's, it's next day delivery, but for these people, it's a three-week delivery. And then they would normally hold off and go to another web shop to figure it out. 
So a brand that's oh, fantastic. So you use your data to figure out who the, the people are who always order so many of your stuff and send it back. And you use that just to influence one other variable in your database, increasing delivery time. And then, ah, no, no. And then, then you would see on the website that they would hold off on their buying thing and go to the next one. Perfect. Now, really smart things you can learn. Together with my colleague Mark, a good friend and colleague, I've written uh, this little book. Ta-da! And I've written actually a few more books, but um, we're talking about cross-industry innovation here. And indeed, uh, as, as just mentioned, thank you, we are now officially in German. I'm really happy. Sehr, sehr froh damit, glaube ich. It's also coming in uh, Spanish and uh, Thai and Korean. So if you think German is a challenge for me, wait till I speak Thai. <laughs> concept Combine Create. That's the concept behind the whole book. Now, how does this work? Let me give you a few examples. Who of you owns a BMW? Who of you has an iDrive system like this? There's knob in there. Very good. Easy, yeah? You can navigate. Perfect. It comes from the gaming sector. It's implemented a concept from the gaming sector into your car. Perfect example. Here you have the conveyor belt. We know that from factories, and it's implemented in the airport. And you see that in sushi bars. You see them everywhere. So technology jumps from sector to sector relatively easily. Um, the baby stroller actually comes from landing gear, retractable landing gear. Owen McLaren was a Spitfire engineer, and he came up with the baby stroller concept. So all beautiful areas, especially, say, in Physical products and technical areas, it's relatively easy. It's time to go slowly more conceptual. If you've ever been in prison, who of you has ever? Nah. Uh, anyway, if you've ever been in prison and you've been released early, you get these kind of uh, bracelets. Where does it also, uh, where, where does it also apply? Because this is the Aldi near my place in, in Antwerp. I made a picture. You see this, the little red thing there? It's, it works exactly the same thing. If you drive away from their parking lot, it blocks. It's a perfect way of seeing how technologies, in this case for security, transfer out of their original sector. One more example. Um, this is in Stockholm, Hastigkeitsladriet. Who of you has ever driven too fast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome. <laughs> welcome in Austria. <laughs> Who of you has ever had a speeding ticket? Hey, you can drive too fast, but you can also... Oh, very good. Now here, they had the same situation. Everybody was speeding at this uh, specific uh, place. And here they implemented actually a little lottery system. Because in, instead of just flashing the people who drive too fast, they flash everybody. <laughs> and the people who drive too fast, they need to pay. They get, a, they get a fine. But the people who are in the correct speed or lower, they get put into a little bucket. And people are pulled out. And you win part of the money back of the people who have paid. <laughs> Within a week, 60% speed reduction because of the social effect. And the brilliance of this idea was that the people who would earn money would only earn up to 30% of the money that was collected. Because the rest of the 70% was still used to uh, manage uh, the police officers and the cameras and organizing. So the beauty was not to go all the way in and all the way out. The beauty was just to take a 30% of that income and to use that to influence behavior. Now, these are the kind of little, little things that you can use. Not invented here. It's uh, crucial to see that disruption often comes from outside your own sector. Let me give you a small example. There's a candle, horse and carriage, and a traditional post box. Beautiful. Now you could see Vienna there, the romance and everything in there. Beautiful. They have their modern counterparts. Electric lights, a car, and email. And you can put a new column next to it. It's probably LED lighting. Uh, it's a self-driving aut autonomous electric car. And finally, who does email anymore? We all WhatsApp and direct message and whatever we do. That is not the lesson of this picture, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that technology progresses. The main lesson of this image is to see that none of the candle makers went into producing electric light. None of the horse and carriage makers, the carriage makers, went into producing cars, except the Dutch Spiker. And believe me, the Post certainly did not invent nor invest in email. 
So the key lesson is that in many cases, major disruptions don't come from their traditional sectors. How do we counter that? We've already established that you are a higher educated, intelligent, yeah, very intelligent audience. So on the, uh, the axis there is the relevancy of IDs. On the horizontal axis, we have time. If I ask you a serious question, what do I get? Österreichische Leute, wenn ich hier eine seriöse Frage stelle, dann bekomme ich ein. Ja, ein Antwort. Und ein seriöses Antwort, ja. Super. The problem is, you do that. Your competition does that. Everybody does that. We all come to the same serious answers. So finally, everybody's best practice, optimized, Six Sigma, lean, agile, whatever you are, everybody's optimized. That's what we call best practice. You should do best practices because this allows you to go to the next area. At a certain point in time, you get tired. So you see that, that the line goes down, and then you hit zero relevancy. Zero relevancy means an ID that has nothing to do with your question. Like, what? And then you go through this phase here below, and it's called craziness. Like, what is this? <laughs> Serious people normally break off their, uh, their brainstorms then, but the key is to push it a little bit and to jump to the next area, next practice, going from best to next practices. So my elegant plea to you is to go from best practices to next practices. And next practices, in many cases, come from outside your own sector. So you literally need to widen up your view. All right, a uh, design thinking classic example, which absolutely uh, fits my case. What is this? It's a CT scanner, very good. It's a general electric CT scanner. Doc Dietz, a principal engineer at GE Healthcare, uh, delivered this machine. And when he got to the hospital, he saw a little girl crying because she was afraid to go into the room with this machine. And the parent said, no, no, don't be afraid. We have one more try, so don't move before they sedate you. And then, believe me, I have a young child. It's not healthy to sedate children. It messes with your brain. It's not even healthy for you even though this is the only time you actually get to sleep really well. <laughs> but it's not healthy to sedate people, especially not young children. What did they come up with? They took a cue from the entertainment uh, industry, so in this case, uh, a bit like Disney World, and they made it an experience. Looks like this. But not only that, they made it a whole story. They made it a beautiful story. I'm, I'm blacking this out now to see why this is important. So it doesn't start with this sticker thing. It starts with the radiologist that tells the little child, I want to show you a little movie of a fish. And then the child says, yeah, okay. And then they show a little animation uh, movie. GE is still going to send me that one day, I hope. But I'll, I'll tell you, there's a little animation fish that goes up to the child and says, hey, you're human, right? And the child says, yeah, I'm human, why? Now, my friend, the sea star, is in trouble. He's blocked under a little stone. And can you go, I, I scored a boat, can you go in and out to get him? But you need to be absolutely silent, because otherwise the big rock, and then they put on the sound of the magnets in full operation, otherwise the big rock falls, and the child's like, whoa. <laughs> then the child goes in, zit, zit, goes out, gets a rubber sea star, 80% improvement in first time right pictures, without sedating children. Phenomenal. Of course, this is technically the most advanced thing you can have, but combining this with story... Now, by this time, I normally have all the people from Siemens and Philips crying, <laughs> the engineers. They're, oh, my God, we've been so technical and blah, 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 we should add more story. And I said, guys, guys, especially, I'm sorry, these are, many of these engineers are guys. I said, you already did a fantastic work. Eh? And then why, they say, well, supposing you, put not, you would have not put the plastic around the machine. This would be a scary thing. <laughs> so this is good, but it can be way better. <laughs> now, ah, and then everybody, okay, okay, we already did our best. Now, it's crucial uh, that you actually get to apply these things. For innovation, you need to get out of context. There was a study by IBM Business uh, Institute of Business Value. They've interviewed more than 5,000 CXOs, and the primary conclusion was that more than half of them expect that their competition will come from other sectors. So uh, later today we'll see Uber. So this was the front page of their research. Eh? Is the next Uber coming your way? 
And believe me, it is, because here you have the Uberfication of everything. So Uber for liquor delivery, cannabis delivery, I'm Dutch, uh, for errands, odd, odd jobs, hotel rooms, beauty services, home cleaning. There is a Uber, and these are actually companies with a kind of a business model sometimes, but some are actually successful companies for that. So Uberfication of everything. Key there is to see that industry lines are absolutely blurring. I get to work a lot in healthcare, so also uh, Frans van Houten from, from Philips said five lessons healthcare can learn from innovation in other industries. So CEOs are actually opening up to the ideas that even though you have your own innovation department, even though you have your own research and development department, we need to open up because we are very smart. But combining the forces from outside, we can be smarter together. So actually what you see is blurred lines. So industry lines are absolutely blurring. Which sector are you in? Are you in the IT sector? Are you in the res restaurant sector? Are you in the hospitality sector? Are you in the entertainment sector? As soon as you pull your question to a little higher abstraction level, you will see that actually you are playing in a different sector. Not so long ago, the boss from, uh, from Netflix, who of you has Netflix? All right, the boss from Netflix was interviewed and um, they asked him, yeah, which sector are you in? Huh? You are in uh, on-demand uh, streaming content delivery, are you not? And he says, no, we are in the entertainment sector. And now for the moment, the best vehicle, of course, is streaming, but who knows what next vehicle comes up. Now that shows they have a vision because at a certain point, Netflix will jump to the next piece of technology or whatever they require to get their message across. So it's important to see for yourself which sector am I in. Now, the human brain has a, has a capacity to actually limit themselves a little bit, so we need to help. So there are tools available for you. If you've ever flown via London, you see these HSBC uh, commercials. And we made a little tool out of that. It's called the Business Synonyms Tool. Who of you has customers? All right, the majority. Who of you has clients? A few, all right, all right, all right. Who of you has patience? A few, uh, the shrink is in the room, very good. Uh, who of you has students? Yeah, a few, very good now. At the end of the day, these are all the same. So a customer is a client, is a consumer, is a, a student, is a patient, is a shopper, is a buyer, is a purchaser, is a stakeholder, is a boss, is a whatever. And we actually did, we, we interviewed about 50, uh, 50 innovation teams that we did stuff with. The, and we put it a little bit down, but the pain in the beep thing is very popular. So people have a, let's say, nasty relationship with their customers sometimes. Now, you can do this on customers, but you can also do this on service. Help, listening, aid, support, life support. And the key here is to take an element and to jump from context to context. Your, your mind can do that, because here we are actually connecting things that were previously not connected. Why do we do this? to see that in other sectors, someone has dealt with a similar question as you have, but they figured out a totally different answer, a different process to that. By allowing yourself to jump from area to area, you're able to jump out of that context and to figure out, hey, why don't we acquire new employees like Harvard and MIT acquire their new top students? Because they have a whole scouting program in place. Do you have an official scouting program in place for your new employees? Most likely not. Most likely you put an ad or something or you ask via via to get new people in. So there are multiple new processes that other sectors have clearly thought about and you can just take those processes and implement them in your own way. Now service is great because we all have a different view to service. Little picture to illustrate how people have a totally different view to service. Anyway, it's already been uh, been presented uh, this, this morning, Carl, uh, with uh, people want it now, directly, on demand, whatever. This is it, huh? We waited 30 minutes, no sort of <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense. Now, you can do this on supply chain, handover, blah, blah. There are so many different ways you can do that. And we already did this for you, because there are a lot of these things in the book. Now, organizations need a remix strategy. You need to determine how you are going to play this game. Because otherwise, someone, outsmart, out, someone will outsmart you. Now, concept, combine, create is the process. And a great idea is not an invention, but it's a discovery. 
So let go of the illusion of these aha moments. Now it's figuring out, being connected, coming to, to these kind of innovation days to be inspired, take elements from there and use them for yourself. Eh? And cross industry innovation is the commitment to the process, the process of asking the right questions, of combining elements and finding patterns. Now, you can tell whether a man is clever by his answers, and you can tell whether a man is wise by his questions. Few questions. Why don't rules have expiry dates? Eh? Normally in an organization we have a rule and it stays forever. <laughs> why doesn't it just have an expiry date? Or here, uh, why can smart energy meters or th thermostats select the right energy supplier at that moment? Or uh, why don't companies swap employees like they do in the sports industry? Hey, Mid-game, you have a coach and you swap the person. Why don't in customer negotiations, why don't you swap the right person in? We don't do that unless there is a big problem. Then we start to swap people. Why don't we do it to optimize output? And why does a patient get lost in a hospital? Well, in retail, customer routing is an absolute true science. Crazy things. And why is it so much harder to vote for a politician than for the next top model? <laughs> All these kind of questions, mind-boggling. So, for you, question everything. How does it work? Combining ideas, you have three ways to do it. You can do it inside out. You have technology, assets, intellectual capital, and you export them to another sector. The inside out approach. Or you can do the outside in approach. That you think, now there's beautiful stuff to be found somewhere else, let's incorporate in that in, in our structures, in our processes. Or you have the coupled approach that you both, both skin in the game, this is more the traditional open innovation route. Now, you need to remix your industry, or remix another industry. You have beautiful knowledge assets, intellectual capital uh, skills, you use it for your own area, or somewhere else. Cross-industry innovation is a clever way to actually jumpstart a sprungbrett, is that the right word, sprungbrett? Sprungbrett for your innovation efforts, by drawing these kind of analogies and transferring these approaches. And you can do that on multiple levels, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, eh, physical products, easy to find examples. On services, like the uberfication of everything that already jumps directly into business models, but you can do that on partnerships, you can do that on your leadership style, culture, strategy, you can do it on so many different areas, so not only your core products, but also your HR product, uh, processes, you name it. Cross-industry innovation is possible on all these different levels. A few examples, because I collect all these, uh, these news, uh, new things, eh? Formula One, uh, the fr supermarket fridges become more uh, energy efficient by using Formula One aerodynamics. It's a nice, nice transfer, and Formula One is a really, uh, really cool area to learn from because uh, also optimizing factories. McLaren actually has a whole consulting arm to optimize logistical operations. And uh, I got to, to be at the Aviation Meets Automotive uh, event that actually on different materials and different operating procedures, people can learn from each other. Now you think, what's new? Ramon is not telling me anything new, it's just copy-paste. <laughs> Why do I have to sit here for 40 minutes to listen to copy-paste? What's new? Now, copy-paste is not the right strategy. <laughs> so, my plea to you is don't copy-paste. Copy, adapt, paste. Copy, enrich, paste. Copy, take one element, copy, modify, and then paste. So don't just copy, paste. Make it fit for your area. So making it fit is way more important than over-customization. Because over my over-customization leads to this. <laughs> and for that customer, we will do this exception, this exception, blah, 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 you get this. This doesn't sell. This sells, ladies and gentlemen. Later on, Jeffrey is going to talk about Stealing Ideas. There's a beautiful book from uh, Austin Kleon. It's called Steal Like an Artist. And he outlines a beautiful process saying there's good theft and bad theft. So bad theft is just everybody wants to be... Who, who of you has ever heard, maybe in your company, we want to be Apple, we want to be the next iPod of whatever industry or thing. Yeah, a lot of you, very good. <laughs> Believe me, you don't want to be Apple. It's a drag to work there. You don't know from your, your, your uh, colleague what they're doing. It's all secrecy. If you actually talk to someone you're not allowed to talk to, you're fired. It doesn't really match with what we're trying to sell here, eh? an open uh, innovation climate and the hackathons and everything. So if you just skim the surface on Apple, you would 
want to copy their success, but not their operating procedures. So it's important that you don't skim, but you actually study how other companies do stuff. And believe me, I'm an author. Don't steal from one, steal from many. <laughs> because otherwise, it would be plagiarism. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's called research. <laughs> Just steal from as many as you can. Don't imitate, but transform. And make it fit for your customers, for your areas. And don't rip off, but remix it. Now, IKEA and... Uh, this was a design competition, so artists could figure out new uh, quotes uh, on, their, uh, on their famous logos. Hey, we throw in the extra parts just to mess with you. Right? So you have a very intelligent uh, Austrian uh, uh, manager, let me put it like that. On the, yeah, a few Austrian, very good Austrian managers. So you build your own Billy uh, case thing. Very proud and that you've done something physical. Great, very good. Three screws left. Now you're absolutely sure it, it's working and they're all in. So this is a beautiful, uh, beautiful stop line. Now, why do we do this? Just to get you into the IKEA mindset, because let's go to China. What is this? Okay, IKEA in China, very good. What is this? IKEA things, and even the stupid pencils. Everything is there. <laughs> it's not an IKEA. Very good. Everything is fake, ladies and gentlemen. So it looks like an IKEA. It has the same bags and the stupid pencils. <laughs> the problem is, for IKEA, that everything is fake. That is as far as it goes. The problem there is that we have a ripoff, is that also the product quality is fake. These chairs break down after three weeks. So actually, having an IKEA there is so far, because it's hard to go in the inlands of China to figure that out. But it's hurting the global IKEA brand that the quality of these products is less. And that's the biggest problem. That's why they go through legislation and legislation to move. And these are just as big as IKEA. Eh? This is a big skimming operation. Eh? So that's impressive. So be careful next time you buy your IKEA stuff in China. <laughs> so my plea to you is choose your right strategy. This is a business card from a divorce lawyer. Like, oh, you're no, no problem. There you go. So it's, at the end of the day, it's not survival of the fittest. You can be market leader or whatever. It's not survival of the fittest. It's survival of the most fitting. And the most fitting is the reason why we see disruption, why we see digital disruption everywhere, because there are new companies that figure out new ways to please customers way better. And classical companies, as soon as you... Yeah, get to a certain, let's say, operational maturity, you start to be risk averse. Because then finally your middleware solution is actually working. Ah, it's working. Our APIs are doing what they should do. Our reporting is in place. Ah, what a beautiful day. And then someone comes up and he wants to change something. No, 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 no. Because now it's just perfect. So there's always room. It's crucial to see that ideas are not so much inventions, but these discoveries. We've talked about that before. Why am I introducing that to you? Because that's why we have not invented here. Someone else has already solved your problem, yet we don't see it. Why don't we see it? Because there are, maybe you're a religious background, I'm Catholic. Thou shall not steal. Or we want new things. Or we are proud of our own ideas or something. Or uh, we don't really want to build upon someone else's ideas. That's ego, or ego speaking. And my elegant plea to you is don't go for the ego route. Ego blocks you from taking ideas from outside. So go from ego to Lego, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we need to go from ego to Lego. How do we do that? A little toolkit you'll be getting uh, from me, we'll be dis distributing them. Little tool card, a beer mate, beer coaster. You have ID killers that will, people will shout that to you as soon as you uh, come up with a new ID, but we need to go for ID boosters. And I'm introducing the three minute rule here. If you have this thing in your next meeting, next time someone comes up with a crazy ID, don't judge the person or the crazy ID. First, let them speak for three minutes to investigate the ID. Because the problem is we normally don't judge IDs. We judge our IDs of IDs. And that's a very important thing to know and that's why you'll all be getting these things. 
Uh, if you're external, not from lotteries or anything, you're lucky because you get to take one home today. And the one, the rest, uh, Christian, we will distribute via your internal uh, network. Now, the cross-industry innovation readiness check. We made a beautiful uh, bingo card that you can use within your next uh, innovation meeting or something. These are quotes people will say as you are trying to innovate. So this, this is about an uh, amount, haben wir auch auf Deutsch, Bingo hier nicht hier erfunden. Hein? Wir haben unsere eigene, eigene Entwicklungsabteilung. Uh, wir sind uh, nicht in dem Geschäft tätig. Very good. You used to not be, now you are. So the key is there to see that everything is Lego. And um, by decomposing and recomposing and taking some new Lego bricks from somewhere else, you can actually construct your own new rea reality. Now, where do you start? Where do you get your best ideas? You need to go out and look. Where do you go out and look? You can look at other companies, different sectors, nature, art, history, future, all these areas you can find ideas. You can ask yourself, what would this other great company do? There's a beautiful book called What Would Google Do? Now, this same applies here. What would Alibaba do? What would X do? What would Uber do? And you can ask yourself also, what would nature do? Because nature has nine basic principles. I, I work a lot also with engineers and everything. Nature runs on sunlight. Nature uh, rewards cooperation. So that's crucial to see the difference in what you can learn from nature. Because no, if left alone, nature is the most ultimate optimized industrial system ever. Way more than somewhere else. Your galaxy of knowledge. You have your own knowledge, your team's knowledge, your company's knowledge, competitive industries knowledge, and only from point five on it becomes interesting. Non-competitive industries knowledge. All knowledge and the unknown. Now, there are different ways that you can play around with these, uh, with these items, and I have one last thing to show you. It's a little toolkit. You can start your own cross-industry journey, ladies and gentlemen. On the website, you can find all kinds of uh, cool stuff. And I believe even Christian is, and uh, the lotteries are actually distribu distributing a few of my books there. But I want you to take, take you, because we are at uh, the casinos, the cross-industry jackpot. You can find it on our website. You can type in your own thing, and I did it for you already. In this case, you see there, uh, crossindustryinnovation.com slash slot machine. And I've typed in gaming. So if I'm correct, yeah, there we go, gaming. And then you hit the button, and it figures out a type and an appliance. You need to do this at least seven times, because this is an ideation slot machine. So you will actually win, maybe even more than you can win in the casino, who knows, on perfect ideas. The mini gaming toy, we have a crowdsourced gaming box, don't know what it is, an all-in-one gaming center, who knows, and, of course, a social gaming club. And this will go on for a lot of things. But you can type in your own activity for your own business to figure out what this can bring. Now, to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, there's a structured process for cross-industry innovation. It goes like this, 11 steps. I'm not going to go into that. And finally, you will be getting a present. Uh, you will be all be getting the manifesto, the cross-industry manifesto, in which we outline 21 ways to help you open up and the final one is travel more, and that's what I like to do. So we can only connect the dots that we collect. And I'd like to end my story, what I've begun it with, the key insights. Disruption often comes from outside your sector. You need to go from best to next practices, and industry lines are blurring. Ideas are discovery. Someone else has solved your problem, and you need to go from ego to Lego. And organizations need a remix strategy. So you follow the cross-industry innovation process, you use knowledge brokers, and you don't copy-paste. So in short, go outside your business, because otherwise you might be out of business. Thank you very much. <laughs>